I've been suggesting that philosophy is the activity of working out the right way of thinking about things, and I've been trying to explain what I mean by that, and something about how we do that activity. Now one question that you might have about that is about this notion of the right way of thinking about things. For example, how do we know in any given case that there is a right way of thinking about things? Also, how do we know that finding the right way of thinking about things is something that we can do by doing philosophy? by constructing and critically evaluating arguments. Now these are really, really important questions for philosophy, and I don't want to try and answer them now, but I do want to consider what a couple of famous influential philosophers have said about those questions, and that's why I'm here at Old Colton Cemetery outside the David Hume Monument. David Hume was a famous Edinburgh-based philosopher, and he thought that a sceptical attitude towards philosophy's capacity to find out the truth about the world was entirely appropriate. One way of understanding Hume's reasons for thinking this was that he thought that the most important thing for philosophy was that it stay true to our experience of the world. For example, we think that we experience the world in terms of causally connected events, in terms of one thing causing another to happen. But Hume argued that causation was something that we could never really know to be a property of the world in itself but rather was something extra that our mind is prone to add to the impressions that we get from the world. His famous example to illustrate this was of two billiard balls knocking into each other. We're prone to experience the first billiard ball is rolling into the second and causing it to roll off. But Hume suggested that all we really experience is a series of impressions of billiard balls at various times and places, and we never experience anything extra that connects those two billiard balls that we can call causation. Hume argued this about all sorts of different things. For example, he thought that we're not justified in thinking that there is some self that connects all our different experiences and thoughts and beliefs. Because all we ever really experience about us and our own minds is those thoughts and experiences and beliefs. Most famously and controversially, Hume argued that we weren't entitled, on the basis of our experience, to believe in an omnipotent and omniscient God. That's why, after he was buried here, they had to post armed guards outside his tomb for several days. So for Hume, by doing philosophy we can learn all about the various habits that we have of associating impressions and ideas, and the various propensities that we have to draw conclusions about the world on the basis of those impressions. But we can never really know whether those habits of association are the right ones, or whether those conclusions that we're drawing are really putting us in touch with the way that the world is. So this led Hume to conclude that the observation of human blindness and weakness is the result of all philosophy, and meets us at every turn, in spite of our endeavours to elude or avoid it. We've just seen that Hume had a very sceptical view about the power of philosophy to put us in touch with facts about the way that the world is. Now, it was that sceptical view that the German philosopher Immanuel Kant famously said awoke him from his dogmatic slumbers. I'm outside my office at the University of Edinburgh in front of a portrait of Professor Norman Kemp Smith, um, a former professor at the university, who was famous for translating Kant's most important book, his Critique of Pure Reason. Now, in that book, Kant tried to say what he meant by being awoken from his dogmatic slumbers and also what he was going to do about it. Now, what he meant was that he thought that prior to reading Hume, he had just assumed that philosophy could put us in touch with facts about how the world was. And in fact, he thought that all philosophers prior to Hume had just assumed that. But after reading Hume, Kant realised that we couldn't just assume that, we need to prove it. And in the Critique of Pure Reason, Kant tried to do that. Now, the way that he did that was very complicated. But the basic idea is that he tried to show that the idea of a world that doesn't correspond to the rules that govern our mind is just nonsensical. So he thought that Hume was exactly right um, in thinking that he'd shown that there are certain ways that we just can't avoid experiencing the world. We have to experience the world as laid out in space, as unfolding over time, and as containing causally connected events. But where Kant differed from Hume was that he thought that these weren't just facts about the way that our mind worked. He thought that these were also facts about the way that the world had to work. In fact, he thought that these were facts about what it was for there to be a world there at all. 
So Kant argued that if we try and imagine a world that doesn't have these features of space and time and causality, then we just have no reason to think of what we're imagining as a world at all. We just can't get a grip on what that would mean for a world to lack these things. And so in that way, Kant tried to argue that the rules that govern the way that our mind works are also the rules that govern the way the world has to work. And that was how Kant thought that he could respond to Hume's sceptical challenge for philosophy. So this week I've been trying to explain to you what I think philosophy is. And we've even started to do some philosophy. Well, we've been trying to assess arguments about whether or not I should go to the cinema, whether or not we have free will, or what it really means to try and work out the right way of thinking about something. In the rest of the course, you're going to continue that activity. You're going to step back and try and work out the right way of thinking about a whole lot of other topics. What it is to have a mind, what it is to know about the world, and what it is to gain knowledge through scientific inquiry. Are just some of the topics that we're going to look at. So I really hope you enjoy it, and thanks very much for watching.